Governor Yesen Wike and leaders of the River, of River State, I beg your pardon, have issued a 48-hour ultimatum to the federal government to bring to book those behind the invasion of the residents of Justice Miri Odili of the Supreme Court of Nigeria in Abuja. Now, the River's leaders warned that should anything bad happen to Justice Odili, her husband, the former governor of River State, Dr. Peter Odili, the federal government should be held accountable. Also, the House of Representatives Committee on Judiciary has called for an urgent, discreet investigation, underline the word discreet, into the siege laid to the residents of the justice. It said the investigation would help to unmask the perpetrators believed to be security operatives. Well, joining us to discuss this is um, Opunabo Inkel Tare, he's a former special uh, advisor to the governor of River State. Thank you very much, Opunabo. We're glad to have you here again. Thank you, Marianne. So this issue obviously directly um, affects someone from River State and, of course, uh, uh, a judge who is highly placed. I mean, this is not the first time um, that judges have... A justice. A justice, I beg your pardon. Um, this is not the first time that this has happened. Uh, and this time, um, you know, the home of... Uh, you know, the second most senior jurist of the Apex Court, um, Justice Mary Odili. Um, and there's been a row, of course. It's not just the governor and the leaders in River State or even the members of the House of Representatives uh, Judiciary Committee that have been speaking on this. Um, several people, um, even certain people from the Southwest, have raised eyebrows as to, you know, this occurrence. But I'm going to ask you fairly, um, what do you think could have um, necessitated this type of uh, invasion? Well, yes. Um, understandably, all kinds of interpretation will be woken in faith, especially slanted ones, when you consider uh, the fact that I'm talking of uh, in this particular case, the orderly now, uh, we, although we are not completely going to divorce the other raid in River State, two, two places in River State and in some other places. But when you consider the fact that um, Dr. Peter Odenis' passport was seized, uh, I think it was returned to him uh, when he went to court, because he actually went to court to challenge the siege of his court. And uh, the immigration said that they acted on the, at the behest of the DSS, the DSS denied it. Then now you also have uh, a siege. The siege was made at the presidents of the same orderly. So you begin to wonder, what is it about this orderly? What acts does the federal government have to grind with the orderly? And that is why it has generated a lot of worry. And the whole thing is being pressed by the um, stage of preaching are carried out against the judges in their residences in the wee hours of the morning, I think at about um, two or thereabout, that was last year or something. So a lot of people now believe that it is a deliberate attempt to cage the judiciary. That's the belief. When the federal government sees it as a cleansing process, Nigeria sees it as a difficult. If you believe that a man is corrupt, all you need to do is carry out a diligent investigation, come up with your proof, there must be evidentiary proof, and you go to court. It is embarrassing. We are not saying that yes, the judges have immunity, the judges don't have immunity, but given their status in the society, it is the last hope of the common man. These are human beings that are referred to as lords. You say, my lord is lordship. This, yeah, there is that sort of, that sort of, uh, uh, you know, reverence attached to that office. So it is very unfortunate that in this part, I'm not saying a corrupt judge. If the judge is better and it is proven, and when you say proven, it must be subjected to the clinical prognosis of the court. Uh -huh. So why did it prove that the judge is better? Why not? Charge him. Arrest the judge and charge that judge. That judge has no immunity. Even the government and president that have immunity, once they exit office, they are being prosecuted. But a situation where you get up in the morning and your wings just decide, oh, today I want to embarrass a particular judge. Now, what happened in this particular case? 
a magistrate gave a warrant into the warrant of arrest, uh, a warrant of a uh, sack warrant. And that same magistrate is saying, oh, it was mistaken. There was no well, name. Well, directly, he said he was misled. No name on that warrant. You cannot talk of mistaken address. So the whole thing is suspect. It becomes suspicious. It's as if the federal government retreated as a result of the Ferrari that the siege uh, 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 created, the siege stimulated. That is the belief. So we are yet to understand what the federal government has with the uh, the federal government has to like with the other beliefs. Mm, interesting. Um, the South East South South Professionals and Yoruba um, Ronu Leadership uh, Forum has also condemned this action. Governor Wike, the governor of River State, has said that this was an assassination attempt. He is making reference to the time uh, which this happened. And, and he's also saying that there is an undertone, which has made him also issue a 48-hour um, ultimatum to the federal government to um, fish up the people who uh, purportedly were responsible for this. Uh, and he's saying that nothing should happen to either the justice herself or her husband. Um, do you necessarily agree with the governor of River State that this was an assassination attempt? Why would a justice want to be, why would they want to kill a justice in that manner? And if there be anything that, um, be any skeletons in her cupboard, um, like you have said, aren't there better ways of going about it? So do you necessarily agree with Governor Wike's position? I completely dissent. It's just being politicized. Uh, and maybe an assassination attempt. We condemn the embarrassment, no doubt about that. A lot of folks make it. We, we don't believe, we don't expect that uh, judges, whether of the High Court, Court of Appeal, or Supreme Court, should be so treated in such an ignominious and disrespectful manner. We don't expect that. And that will also make the judges lose confidence. Are they trying to intimidate these judges? Because that's the interpretation a lot of people are giving to you. That is just one thing to intimidate these judges, so that the judges will forever do their bidding. However, I don't think it's an assassination attempt. Not at all, far from it. If you want to assassinate somebody, you're not going to send how many policemen to the person's house. Then, of course, the assassins are known already. The identities are described already. You assassinate somebody <coughs> with your identity hidden. You, you don't disclose the identity of the of, of, of the, the assassin. It's not, you don't do that. So I don't think it's a question of assassination. It's not a matter of assassination. And how many, if you don't assassinate, how many policemen would they send to that? They said they had hundreds of policemen there, but by policemen. So how many would they send, how many policemen to that assassin in uniform to that assassin? Uh, uh, a judge or any point for that matter. It's not done that way. So I don't think it's assassination. That's a good belief. It's not assassination. But it will condemn completely the action of those SSS men or policemen. And I want the federal government, if it is clear that it has no nexus with what happened, that national embarrassment, that it has no nexus with it, and that the people were not acting on these orders, to call to uh, investigate the IGP and the uh, DG, the SSS. They have to be invited, thoroughly investigated. We saw some of the faces of the policemen, so they are not hidden. They are, they are, they are known by their colleagues. They should also be invited. Who get who at whose orders are they acting? This thing must not be swept under the carpet. It must not be treated with heat blue. So that this nonsense will end. But if the federal government does nothing on what has just happened, then it simply means the whole thing was orchestrated by the federal government. Hmm. And there's so much pressure, so much pressure on the government to act. But if the federal government refuses to act, then I can tell authoritatively that everything was orchestrated by the federal government. I mean, you literally answered my question because I was going to, going to ask that. You know, many people are saying, even emo lawyers are saying, this has to be investigated. Something has to come out of it. But knowing the body language... Of the of extraction, you know. 
She's of Igbo extraction. I know. I and know. rivers like that. But I'm yeah. saying... Yeah. I'm married, sorry. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, knowing how issues like this are treated and most times swept under the carpet, I, we remember what happened when certain judges' um, uh, homes were sacked in Gombe, in Abuja, even in River State. Nothing necessarily came out of in it. In River State. Uh, exactly. So, yeah. um, do we really... Should we be expecting anything to come out of it? And, and I'm not in any way trying to be pessimistic here, but um, looking at the realities on the ground, would anything come out of this at the end of the day? I mean, you're already saying that if government doesn't do, but if it's a probability, in, in, in reality, will the government do anything, even though the government has already come out to say they do not have a hand in it? Well, first, well, well, first I, why, why I have my doubt is because... Um, the, excuse me, the controversial search warrant issued by the chief magistrate. The chief magistrate that issued that search warrant is yet to be interrogated. And it is funny that they said, he said, or he allegedly said that there was no name on the search warrant he issued. It is, it is so ridiculous because you must have the name and the address of that search warrant. And you can also have say, it was mistaking uh, 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 address because you have the address and before you went back, you must have done your own investigation to know. And the opening house, uh, house is a known house in Abuja. So it was not a case of mistaken identity, no. They actually went for the audit. But why is what we were yet to find out. The why. Mm. Because I did not sit in one. She's not the only justice on that bench. Mm -hmm. You are going to, even if a case gets to Supreme Court, she's not the only one. If you talk of influencing the judgment, so to speak, as Nigerians will say, influencing the judgment, the president can go to the CJN to so do. The CJN can also decide to say, okay, on a particular matter, are you are not going to see. This is the administrative head. So we are here to reconcile. What, what are they trying to do? Especially with the seizure of the passport of Dr. Peter Lynn. Former government of university. So, what is this tax that the federal government has to grind with the ordinary? That is what we want to find out. I bet so that, now I, I bet that all on the issue of the uh, on the issue of the ultimatum. Uh, leave that is not quality. If the federal government refuses to do the work, you do nothing. What do you do to the federal government? You're not going to do anything to the federal government. Well, thank you very so much. It's just to. Thank you very much. Sorry? We're almost out of time. Upanabal Inko Tara is a former special <laughs> advisor thank to you. the governor of River State on media. Uh, thank you very thank much for you. speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. Um, so the new national chairman of the PDP had stated that if the PDP was elected in 2023, it would develop Nigeria. We'll hear the reactions of Nigerians to that response. And when we return, I will be saying my goodbyes. By the grace of God, this country is for Nigeria, and uh, I believe anybody saying he will develop this country is a verbal talk. Personally, my opinion is that God is the only one that can put somebody that will make this country to be a... Promises have been made several times, and I believe, well, we don't have anybody to say, actually, this is the person that will make the... that will be the God sent. Well, let's give any person a trial, because with a trial, it may even work out. No, it far remains that um, it's not all about the party. It's all about uh, a person and uh, his own personality. So, unlike me, I don't vote party, but I vote uh, people's personality. So, whosoever that wants to come in, maybe as a PDP, and if he believes that it will not fail Nigerians, it can it can come in there's no problem about that and what the masses need is for them to give us a good result we've given apc eight years and for me as a youth there is nothing tangible that they've done so let's try pdp or if possible let's try any other party who can actually spring up with someone new let's try up new things for me personally i would say let's try up new things because we are tired of these old men we've been seeing since 1999 so let's try up new guys. <laughs> ah, to me, it, 
I, I, I believe in God choosing president for us. It is only who God chooses that can develop this country, not uh, has anything to do with PDP or APC. Even in another party, let the person be God choosing candidate. I think that is the best. Well, I want to thank you all for being part of the conversation. It's been Plus Politics. I am Mariana Cohn. We'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Have a good evening.